I meet so many great teachers who have such a vision for education and just incredible ideas on how we can make our schools better. And many times I'll say to them, have you ever considered being a principal? And not every teacher wants to be a principal and nor should they. It doesn't matter, you know, your vision or anything like that. If you love teaching, um, that's something you should continue to do. But sometimes I get frustrated because I hear teachers saying, well, I don't want to do that job. And my thought is, well, you don't have to do it the job the way that you see it being done that you have a ton of ownership over the direction, how you could do things differently. And I think that's what we need. We need um, administrators who don't think the same as administration was 5, 10, 15, 20, even two years ago. I think we need people who think differently, who really empower teachers, who create incredible opportunities and to really kind of own the role in a way that makes sense for you. And uh, I've often challenged teachers to, Think about, would you want to be a learner in your own classroom? But the same with administrators, would you want to actually work for you as a principal? Do you create a space that you always wanted when you were a teacher? And the reason I bring this all up is because I just had a wonderful opportunity to connect with Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett on her book, The Principal's Journey, Navigating the Path to School Leadership, where she talks about the transition from a role in education to administration, some of the things that you have to do, some of the things that are actually, you know, kind of just logistical things, like how do you apply? How do you go through this process? But the thing I love is that what happens when you get the job and how do you ensure that you stay there? And so really thinking about how we need to think about leadership. When I talk about innovation, a lot of people think about teaching and learning, but I also talk about innovative leadership. How do we think differently about how we lead? Because we're not going to teach and learn differently and better if we don't actually have a new paradigm shift in how we see leadership. Really great podcast. Dr. Rachel is absolutely amazing. You're going to love it. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am really blessed today to have Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett actually join me on the podcast. She is currently a principal. Um, she's taught, she's AP. Actually, I'm going to ask you about this because you are AP and principal in the same school and that doesn't always work out well. So yes. <laughs> I'm going I'm to ask you about that uh, in a bit. Um, but she also has a book called The Principal's Journey, Navigate, Navigating the Path to School Leadership. And when we talked about it in the last podcast, Um, It was real. I was like jealous that this book was not written when I became a principal because there's a lot of things that I didn't know how to do and and connect with. So I'm going to ask her uh, more about this book. So Dr. Rachel, thanks for being on the podcast. If you can just tell everyone who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Awesome. Thank you again, George, for this opportunity. And I'm so excited to talk with the audience today. So my name is Rachel Edouard. And I've been in education and public education for 18 years, and I began my career as a kindergarten teacher. And I didn't see school leadership in my future, but it was a my former principal who tapped me on the shoulder who said, I see something in you um, that you could do this work. And I remember feeling very um, intimidated by the work that I saw her doing, but she had a wonderful way through mentorship of giving me experiences and just making the job seem doable. One of the the most important things that she taught me was that a principal doesn't have to have all the answers. And that really helped me to understand that I was capable of doing the job. I just, you know, needed support like everyone else. So um, I decided to write the book. A book had always been on my mind to write about leadership. But what I saw was there was a gap because when I would read leadership books, most of the time was written from the perspective that you were already in the position. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take it one step back and say, how can I help you get there? Because when I've talked with different aspiring leaders or different, um, sometimes when I was working with universities and speaking with teacher leaders, they would say, Rachel, I love all the things that you're doing, but how do I do it? How do I get there? And so I wrote the book to really fill that gap of, here are some intentional steps. Here are some experiences that you would need. Here's how you can write a good cover letter. And here's how you should, why you should be taking professional risks. Mm-hmm. And then when you get the position, what are the, what's the knowledge and information that you will need to stay there? So talking about a work-life balance, how do you have hard conversations? How do you secure a strong mentor? All of those things are really important that are highlights in the book. 
I, lo- I love this because there, there is a lot of things that you don't know. And it is a very, um, you know, when you teach kindergarten, there's probably a kindergarten teacher across the hall, right? Yeah. When you're a principal, there's no principal across the hall, right? Right. And so that, that is something that is really challenging. I, and, I, and I'm making an assumption here just on overall education. I, I honestly haven't heard too many teachers that taught kindergarten and go into leadership. Yeah. And, and as you're talking, like, I wish there was way more. And weirdly enough, you know, I trained to become a kindergarten teacher and it's the only grade I've never taught, but okay. I had a little Billy Madison in me, right? Like a little Billy Madison in kindergarten. So <laughs> um, that was kind of my thing. Can, like specifically, what do you think? And I'm like, I, I, none of these questions that, you know, I've given ahead of time, cause they kind of just meant to be conversational. Mm-hmm. What do you think? has helped you as a kindergarten teacher in school leadership. Like that, yeah. that to me is like a, cause there's, there's very, it's a, it's a, it's a very different skill set, you know, kindergarten mm-hmm. versus, you know, and I think every, you know, class, but I just, I love that, that you went from kindergarten to, you know, being yeah. a school leader. So like, what did you learn in kindergarten that helped you to do what you do today? Yeah. I love that question because, um, you know, the book, everything I need to learn, I learned in kindergarten. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you. I think if we had more early childhood teachers, you know, aspiring and moving into the principalship, it would be great. Yeah, um, when I was too. when I was promoted, I heard from people all over my district, some I knew and some I didn't know, just say, I would love if my principal had an early childhood background and, and yeah. understood what happens in pre-K, right? Because that's my bread and butter, mm-hmm. teaching children to read, knowing the importance of play. And so I think when I um when I think about the correlations between being a kindergarten teacher and being a principal, I see a lot of similarities. First of all, a kindergarten teacher is typically that ambassador for the family. They're the first point of contact for new families, particularly when there's the only sibling or the oldest sibling of a family. That's the first interaction with the public school system or charters or whichever. It's kindergarten. So it's such a critical year for for families. And so teachers are so important during that process, just being that friendly and helpful presence, being very patient being understanding, being empathetic, understanding that we have children of all different experiences and levels coming in together and helping them to, um, you know, learn the school routines, all of those things. It's very similar to the principalship. So as a principal, I'm the ambassador of the school. And I'm usually that first face of the school. I'm the representative. And so it's important for me that I have a similar experience with my families, that they know that they can come to me, that they feel I'm approachable, that I can answer questions for them. Um, I'm usually the person who does the kindergarten orientation with my team because I have that kindergarten background and it is wonderful. It's a great bridge because I know, you know, I know the curriculum, I know those pieces, but I also have the, the administrative side. So there are some other questions a parent might have that I can also answer from the policy level or from the district level. So it's a great tie in. You know, that so that that interaction, because I was thinking about that and just kind of the connection to the work that I see that you're doing. Um, you know, I, I one of the things I always encourage kindergarten teachers is exactly what you talk about is that you are the first interaction. And, um, you know, even sharing a video of your classroom before parents show up. Yes, you know, it helps with some anxiety. And you know, it's like they they're because they're nervous, right? And I, I, my the joke I always say is like, who cries more the first day kids or parents, and it's always yes. parents, right? And so <laughs> Um, because they don't know, they don't know what's going on. And so like, I, I, one of the things that I love about, um, I, I feel like I know your school through you has actually you posting on social media made like new families come into your school. Like, have they, like, I'm going to oh, yes. stood up. I'd be Googling <laughs> you before my kids are hitting any school. Right. I like look up everybody. So have you found that's been, been beneficial to, you know, obviously you really do great stuff to help educators, but has it been helpful to what, you know, families coming into your school? Absolutely. We are a high in demand school. We are actually the number one ranked school in central Maryland. Just and wait, so, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yep. You got to say that one more time. We are the number one ranked school in central Maryland. <laughs> yes, you got to do that. You gotta do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, that's what I think I got. I got a million buttons with my air horns. I like that one. That's the best one. (laughs) Uh, But I definitely think as a principal, it's very important that we are, 
you know, we are the face. And so we want to show our school in this best light and show the wonderful things that are happening. And it's not just forward facing in terms of social media. I do post on social media from our school's account to talk about instruction and all the cool things, the dances, all the wonderful things that we're doing. But I also send that to our community in our newsletter every week. I also send it to staff every Friday. We have a happy Friday highlights and I'll take pictures around the school and send it out to staff once a week. So Love it's it. very important that we um, are able to celebrate the wonderful things that are that are happening in every school. Yeah, me the, the one of my favorite things is success breeds success, right? You show awesome stuff, more people yeah. want to be part of the awesome stuff, more people want to create the awesome stuff. Absolutely. So I, I absolutely love that. So just just to clarify, you did you teach in the school that you're principal at? I like, did not teach here. So I know you're AP though, right? Yes. So, so how was the how was moving because a lot of districts will not do that. They will not allow an AP to go to the principalship. And yeah. you know, there's reason behind that for what, but how did you, how did you find that transition? And yes, I guess, sure. I guess more importantly, how did your staff find it? Right. Okay. Yeah. So shout out to my former principal. She was principal. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Jacobs. She was principal here for 13 years. I yeah. call her the queen of my school. <laughs> and so there was a lot of anxiety around who was coming in after her because right. our school community is used to that consistent leader, that consistency. And so um, we don't have a choice in where we're going in terms of promotions, right. but I was so happy to have been able to stay here. Uh, I'm going on a decade here and I agree with you. I think sometimes people think, oh, you're transitioning. That's going to be easy. Or maybe they think it's going to be hard. I think the the great part about transitioning within your community is that you have those relationships. Right. You already know the majority of the students, you know your families, and you know your staff well. I think the challenge is the role of the AP is so different than the role of the principal. Mm -hmm. So it's helping the staff to also make that shift of, okay, I'm, I'm still here, but I'm in a different role. So yeah. one of the things that I did as a new principal, when, when I was um, named and we had our first staff, meeting, I reintroduced myself. I said, I am, you know, Rachel Adueke, but these are my beliefs as principal. And I list, listed those out. It's my belief that we're going to work together and collaborate on behalf of children. It's my belief that we will include our families as partners, you know, so it's my belief that we must communicate with each other in an effective way, you know, on behalf of kids. So it was helpful for me to lay that out so that I could distinguish my leadership and also set expectations for how I was going to lead as a principal. That, that, you know, that's, I think that's really kind of important because there is the, the, the best advice I got on principalship is to really kind of ask like, what will your fingerprints be on the school after you leave? So like, how will people know you're there? And, you know, for some people, the only way that, you know, is that they post a picture of themselves, like in a portrait, <laughs> right? And it's like, that's not, that's not, that's not the legacy we want to leave. Right. It's right. actually like, how are you changing that? I think, you know, really kind of establishing here's, you know, what I hope for. Here's, you know, what's different about me as opposed to, you know, like kind of like, Hey, it's just business as usual kind of, you know, and I, I don't think, yeah. I think also, um, knowing your school, it's not like, Hey, all of these things work, but I want, you know, just everything about me. So we're going to discard all the good stuff. Like, you know, it's like, Hey, there's, yeah. there's great stuff already happening. Let's keep yeah. building on that. But also here's some things that, you know, and, and continuously grow and get better. So the, to enhance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and I love that too. Cause there's, you know, uh, the, on the, you know, there's some nervousness about being AP going to principalship, but there's also a nervousness probably from your staff too, that, Hey, we did all this work with a principal and now we have someone totally new to her coming and mm -hmm. they might just change everything or yeah. reverse everything. And you know, that, that can mm -hmm. be lost. And I, this is probably not going to be popular. What I'm going to say the whole mentality is that, you know, you build a culture and then it will, uh, you know, be there in your absence. I don't believe that to be honest with you, because people build culture. So you can have someone who can come in and totally change your culture for the better or for the worse. And so, you know, because when I was a teacher, like I listen to my boss, even if I don't yeah. agree with them, I don't want to get in trouble. And so if they say, Hey, forget all the things that were done before, now I'm like, all right, I don't want to get yeah. fired. So, you know, so yeah. I think, you know, people make culture. So I, I, I love that. All right. Yeah. So the principal's journey, navigating the path, the school of leadership, um, tell me like, you know, two, two things that, you know, have maybe resonated with readers, um, that you see is like really connecting because th this book is something I think is first of all, I think it's unique. I, I, I don't know of a book that's, which is wonderful, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of things you just don't know as you're going into that role and you can, you know, you know, you, you, you kind of are like immersed in it all of a sudden, 
and you feel like, I, I don't know what's going on. And so I, I love that you kind of are building people up to that. So like what has resonated with the people that have read it that have connected with like, what, what do you think stands out to them? Yeah. So I think in reading the reviews, I think that people like the fact that it's step-by-step. I yeah. really tried to tell a story as I was going through my career. I included like checkpoints and important things that I've learned along the way. So there, there's a lot of personalization there, but also the fact that the readers after every chapter have time and space to reflect and actually answer questions that are related to each chapter that's personalized for them. So it becomes almost like a diary. So right. I think that's a very um, special part of the book that in the future, people can look back and say, wow, this was, these were some of the things I was working on and now they're coming to fruition. So I definitely think that um, those are the two aspects that I hear the most about that people like the personalized stories and they like the personalization yeah. for themselves. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really important aspect because uh, your journey is your journey and there's things I can learn from it, but, you know, going to a totally different school, you know, like as someone who spent you know, the majority of his life in Canada, probably, you know, being where I was in Canada versus where you are in Maryland is, you know, very different. So there's things I could pick up from you, but ultimately in this, like, I don't know if you've ever picked up innovators mindset. The whole premise of the innovators mindset is like, what do you do with what you know? Don't just say like, Hey, Dr. Rachel says this, so I'm going to do this, right? right. You have to kind of still know your community. You have to kind of know where you're at and where you go. The, the thing that I thought about um, when you're ex explaining your book is, uh, and I, I always default because she is the best leader I ever had. Her name's Kelly Wilkins. Um, she, I, uh, when I applied for my first principalship, uh, she, I asked her about my resume and how it should look to apply for this. And she said, go find the leadership standards of the district, which she was actually, you know, the superintendent of, and, <laughs> you know, and, and then show how you're meeting the standards as a teacher already. So you're like, mm -hmm. Hey, I've already, I'm already, what you expect of principals, I'm already doing this yeah. in my current role. So her, it, like the way I always Great advice. Was, was, um, actually like dress to the job you want, not the job you have. That's like how I always kind of thought about that. Yeah. And so like you even mentioned some of the, like the logistical, like even cover letters and things like that. Like, so like, what are like one or two takeaways like of that, of some of that, you know, just kind of getting the job in the first place. Like how, mm -hmm. what do you talk about with the book? So for the that? cover letters, I talk about researching the district, yeah. knowing what is the vision um, and mission of the districts that you are applying to. We know that many people may apply to more than one district. So yeah. what may be appropriate for one district may not be appropriate for another. So we have to know that. Um, I also talk about um, making sure your resume is updated. Um, what happens over time is we have all these experiences, yeah. but if we're not regularly updating them, we forget about things. And there's probably important things that we're leaving off. So I know for myself, whenever I have a new experience, I take two minutes, I open up the resume, I add a bullet point, and then I date it, post date it, the date of, and then that's it. So I never am um, like you, your resume has to be ready. Yeah. That's what I just say. So if someone asks me today, can you provide an updated resume? Yes, it's right here. I don't have to spend time making it because I've been updating it along the way. Right. So that's part of the advice that I give to, to the readers. You know, I, so I'm thinking about this. I, I don't know if you realize this, you're, you're already, I also see another way you're updating your resume by Twitter. Right. Yes. And what you're posting on Instagram and that, that too. And the, one of the things I'm really passionate about is do you actually put people in a position that they're not being prepped to apply for jobs, but people see what they're doing. They're like, no, 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 we want you to come here where people are actually reaching out to them. And I think, uh, that's going to, I'm telling you, I'm just saying this to everyone listening right now. Uh, you're going to see Dr. Rachel everywhere sooner than later. <laughs> Thank you. So I know. I, I, so. I, I, I just love, I love the work that you're doing. So I know you're super busy. I know you're very cognizant of your time. And uh, I am so appreciative that you took the time to be on the podcast. And hopefully um, there's a bunch of new people who don't know your work that are going to pick up your book, connect with it too. So thanks, Dr. Rachel, for, not only for being on the podcast, but all you do for your school, because I, I just find it very, very inspiring. And just I love how people sent you are. And that's what, you know, made me reach out to you to, to be on the podcast as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so, so much, George. I really, this has been invaluable. Thank you so much. I love it. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the episode. Have a wonderful day.